It's Hawkeye! You know, I just realized... Hawkeye really doesn't have a good intro. I mean, like, like with, with WandaVision, it was WandaVision! Uh, Fal actually, Falcon and Winter Soldier didn't really have one I remembered either. And I'll have to, we're going to rewatch them again, me and my dad, because my dad's now getting into the Disney Plus stuff. But anyway, Hawkeye, episode three. Um, so I, I didn't love the first two episodes. I liked them. I didn't hate them. But there was a lot of problems, particularly, like, focusing so much on Kate Bishop, who was not a very likable character. Um, the fact that uh, a lot of stuff wasn't quite adding up. Uh, and honestly, the, the weak, the weakest part of the series at that point for me in episode two was the Kate Bishop character. Episode three, though, is is the best episode so far of the series uh, season. It is, or series. I don't know if they're going to do season one or season two, but let's call it season for now. Uh, yeah, no, ep no. This was. And I just realized this is like this background is so dark and my shirt's so dark. I'm pretty much just. I am a floating head. Do, 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 do. Hi, it's the floating head review show. <laughs> um, this is the best episode. They did a lot of great stuff. They introduced the Echo character. They hints at Kingpin. Um, you know, the that action sequence on the bridge was awesome. Um, the but the interpersonal relationship too. It was all just so well done. Um, they I a lot because a lot because they focus predominantly on Clint. I think, and that's what the show named after said character needs to be doing is focusing on the character he named the show after. And we get to see a lot more of what, like, Clint is going through. Like, the Clint is still dealing with the stuff he did as Ronan. Uh, and how it's coming back to, you know, threaten everyone. Uh, that scene where, you know, it's like, the Ronan's dead, Black Widow killers. Uh, how convenient. You know, the person who killed the person is also dead. Um, it's, and, yeah, the uh, that intro with Echo, man, as a kid, a little deaf girl missing a foot. I, like, the first time I watched it, too, I didn't even realize, like, oh, she's not just disabled, she's disabled. And yet she not only was able to um, grow up to be a competent person, she grew up to be a badass. I love I love that scene with her dad, you know. <laughs> we'll talk about, you know, are dragons real? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe. But they stay hidden. <laughs> Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's going to be good for you. You got to look unless I can't, I'm not actually doing the sign language, right? You got, you got, you got to look, uh, look and pay it. I don't know what attention is. I don't know very many sign language words. I don't know sign language. Part of me has always wanted to learn it though. Part of me has always wanted to learn it. Uh, just because I've occasionally, I do actually get a customer who's deaf at work. So I have to, um, uh, so I have to like do like enunciate, you know, bring my mask down. But there's a we have a screen at work, so it's safe. Bring my mask down so I can enunciate my words. Uh, but if I could learn, I like uh, like I know um, uh, I know that's sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, look, uh, say look, sorry. Um, I know that's thanks to Hawkeye. I know that's more. If that's cookie. <laughs> um. Uh, love you more. Um, and I think, and I believe that's love, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, that, that can be similar, but I, I'm pretty sure you can, I mean, you can easily just do that too. Uh, but I think that's love. Um, so, so I know a little bit, I know a word here or there, but I don't know anything like of substance. I could not for, I would be lucky. Uh, so I, I could, I could do, I, I love you. I, I'm sorry. I could maybe do that. I, I could do that. That's about as best as I can do. But I do like the fact, too, that Clint says, like, I'm hard of hearing, not deaf. Now, that does get a little weird later on where he does lose the hearing aid. And it seems like even though he's hard of hearing, he's pretty deaf. Um, though not entirely. Like, I think we do hear how he is perceiving the world. And it's clear that he isn't, he isn't deaf. He is, is but... In the comics, he lost like 80% of his hearing, and that does sound about right. Like, most things are, it sound, they sound almost like so far into distance that he can barely hear it, and everything else is almost like tinnitus. Like, you just hear a little bit of like, like there. But still, I, I do like the fact they're really leaning into this. Hawkeye finally gets his bow, we see the trick arrows. The trick arrow stuff is great. It was the putty arrow, the acid arrows... Uh, the Pentec arrow was awesome. Oh my god, the Pentec arrows. My girlfriend and I actually had to rewind that scene. She's like, she's like, can we rewind that? I was like, yeah. 
<laughs> that was awesome. Um, and the, the Echo character is Echo's getting her own series. So this is very interesting that the Echo character, I'm glad they made also interesting as well. It's going to be interesting to see what they do and how this story plot or storyline gets resolved. As in the comics, her father wasn't killed by the Ronin or Hawkeye. The father was killed by Kingpin. Which leads us into the whole, your uncle be, uh, will take you home. And all you see is this guy in a black suit with the cufflinks, kind of like giving him a laugh and you know, saying hi. And they reference uncle again. It's like, uncle's not going to be happy with you. And Hawkeye says, nope, there's someone up, someone higher up there. Look. It's been really heavily theorized that Kingpin's going to be involved. And this is a street-level series. This isn't uh, WandaVision or Loki where it's affecting reality and universes, timelines. It's not even uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier where it is a uh, like a global issue with Super Soldier Serum getting out there and terrorists. Or, no, this is street-level crime and him coming to deal with his past. So Kingpin could make a lot of sense. And... I'm not saying it's Vincent D'Onofrio. What I am saying, and I'm not saying it's Kingpin, but they they are making, they are implying this very heavily. It's kind of like with the, what was the power broker whole thing? It's like, who is the power broker? They are very much implying that it is, it, it, they know what they're doing with this series. Let's be very clear. They know what they're implying with this series. Now this could be a red herring, like they did in Wandavision with the the fake or the theatro, if you will. Uh, this could be a red herring. It could, but I'm gonna be in the camp too, where I think it's Kingpin. Right now, I think it's Kingpin. It could be Tombstone, could be Hammerhead, just other crime bosses out the shore. But I do think I think it's uh, I think it's Kingpin, and I'm even gonna go so far as to say I do think it's Vincent D'Onofrio. So we'll see what happens there. But other than that, I love. What I actually liked about this episode more than uh, the other two episodes is it actually didn't make me hate Kate. In the uh, in the uh, first two episodes, I wasn't I didn't hate Kate, but I, I certainly didn't like Kate. Kate was really annoying, not the brightest, over eager, and and she, and they really kind of illustrated the point where she is out of her depth quite a bit. Um, like her mom says, like. You know, to, you're, you've been rich and um, you've always, you're rich and young and taken for someone who hasn't always been, I can't remember what the line was in the uh, first episode, but it's, uh, you've always been, or you've been rich and whatever and taken for someone who has not, you are going to get hurt and not scrape on the knee. And, you know, he, um, he, Clint reiterates like, yeah, she's a spo she's spoiled rotten. Uh, and when, uh, Echo basically choke holds her, she's, she's freaking out. Like, oh God, like she might actually kill me. Like she's now starting to realize, oh God. Now that said, it, it, it comes and goes in waves, the likability of Kate, because there's also that great scene where his son calls him up on the phone and she's basically telling him what he's saying because he can't hear him on the phone. And... You know, she can see how broken he is about it. And you can finally kind of see that she's starting to understand what she's done. That this is the, there's a reason he does this the way he does. That he's got a family and he just, he's just a man who wants to be there for his kids and his wife. And he wants to be home and have a great Christmas. And she's keeping him from that. She's keeping him from that. And, you know, it, it, it sucks. It's hard. It's um, for it's really unfortunate, and you know, then you get that scene at the diner where she still isn't getting it. I mean, she's getting it to a degree, but she, it, it's a step by step process because you know he explains like this: it, it, it's you're gonna sacrifice a lot. You're gonna lose things, things you're never gonna get back. You're gonna lose. Like, look at me. I'm as in shape as I am. I'm also you know not in shape. <laughs> Like, look at me, I've lost my hearing, I'm human, I have to, like, you know, mend my own wounds, I've lost my closest friend, I, I almost lost my humanity, I lost my family for five freaking years. He doesn't say any of this, obviously, but this is what he's implying. And the case is like, yeah, but you, 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 do, you do gain stuff like cool costumes and trick arrows, and you can just see him like, yeah, yeah, oh god, this kid. And I'm, look, 
she, and she can kind of clearly see, and she can clear, uh, clearly see that he knows something about Ronan that he's not letting on. But she, I'm wondering what's going to happen when she learns that this guy she's, you know, admired, that she's, you know, um, you know, looked up to and all that is the, was the Ronin. And then realize, I think that's going to be the true realization of who Hawkeye to her actually is, is that he is just a man. Ultimately, he is a man who's just trying to help people, and by trying to help people, he lost everything, and it drove him down a dark path. And the fact is, he might have still been down there, or just dead somewhere, had you know they not lucked out with the at the Avengers compound with everything. So I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. It really is. I'll even say this: the track suits were actually a lot more fun in this episode. <laughs> the, the scene about the old Imagine Dragon sticker—that was actually a very funny bit. Um, then, uh, I mean, then, then you get the last scene there where uh, Swordmaster has got the Ronin sword to Hawkeye's neck. So now the question is going to actually be: Do these guys know each other? Do they know each other? And who, and uh, if they do, how is that going to work out? We'll find out. I mean, they, they've been implying that he may be a villain, but I, I think it really is a red herring. We, I think we all kind of suspect it's really Vera Fambigo who's the villain here. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Until then, though, I like this episode. This is definitely the best one, I think, of the three so far. But we still got three more episodes to go, so we'll see if Hawkeye can end on a strong note. I think it started, it definitely didn't start the strongest, but it is definitely picking up pace. Maybe the next three episodes can really put it over the edge. As it stands, though, it is still the weakest. It is also the most different, not the most different, it is also different than the other series. WandaVision was a prayer, it was a drama, a dramedy, um... Well, it was a drama wrapped up in a, a drama tragedy wrapped up in a wacky veil of comedy. Uh, you know, Hawkeye, no, Hawkeye, uh, Falcon Wear Soldier, political thriller. That uh, definitely, definitely had a political edge, uh, thriller edge to it. Uh, you know, Loki was a sci-fi, uh, wacky Doctor Who mystery uh, movie. And um, then you get Hawkeye, which is pretty much uh, a holiday comedy. With, with, holiday action comedy. Okay, holiday action comedy. With definitely some dramatic moments in there. 100%. Uh, and I think, I'm trying to think of the next series we get. Is it She-Hulk, Moon Knight, or Ms. Marvel? Because we know, because uh, we're pretty much uh, led to believe that She-Hulk is a procedural. But not... We don't know what Ms. Marvel and Moon Knight are like. Uh, so, mm, we'll, we'll find out. Till then, though, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you folks for the next one. And have a good day. And as always, put your uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. I teach you who wins. Anything I do on the channel, put in the comments below. See you later, folks.